All right, I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> get started. I see that there are a couple of people tuning in. Awesome, awesome. So if you're uh, tuning in and you want to say hi in the comments, I always love seeing who is out there and who's tuning in. And uh, well, welcome to another episode, another live stream journaling session. Um, I've been gone the last uh, few weeks from from uh, doing this just simply because of the, ho the holidays. So I'm finally kind of getting caught back up and and going to dive back into doing the live stream journaling today. So uh, to kind of recap, since it's been quite a, quite a while, um, I had finished a little tiny book, the, the journal that I was calling my Emerge uh, or Emergence Journal. And I um, uh, last, I think it was last time, it seems it, it was so long ago, uh, but I actually uh, hand stitched a little pamphlet book that only had um, you know, not a whole lot of pages. Uh, I can't remember exactly how many. I think it had, uh, I used five pieces of paper. So uh, ended up being about 20 pages, I think. Um, but just a, a little tiny book that I put together and just something that I could really play around in and experiment and just try something a little bit different. So I'll, I'll show that in a minute. So today I wanted to kind of, well, I'm going to continue working in that, and uh, I pulled out some collage materials, as long as well as some of my standard water soluble, soluble materials as well. So, um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the uh, comments below. I'll, I try to answer them as I go through, um, and if I don't get a chance to answer them during the live stream, I do try to sit down and answer them later. And if you're tuning in later. Yeah, I do try to, try to try to catch the comments even on uh, YouTube. So if you have any questions, any comments, post them down there in the comments below. So let me go ahead and switch this over and I'll show you what I've been working on. So this was the little book that I'd made, um, just a piece of heavy duty watercolor paper for the cover. And then I used uh, five sheets of mixed media paper on the inside and I did a lot with um, the the paint and uh, just really kind of starting to build up the layers kind of worked about halfway through it and so um, I think I'll go ahead and continue working with this today one of the things that I noticed is I, I started using some of the water soluble pencil and I created some of these paths that go through so I just want to pick up with with that. Um, let me go ahead and adjust the brightness a little bit. There we go. There we go. Just <clears throat> makes it show up a little bit better. Um, yeah, so I, I was just kind of thinking about these lines and I'm, I use these ink tents so much uh, that I know that the thinner lines here that is from the baked earth, which is like a terracotta color, and the darker one is from uh, willow, which is a little bit darker of a brown. So let me go ahead and make sure baked earth. And then I, I like this idea of continuing the lines on the other side. And I've done this before. I've done it, I did it in that little emergence journal um it's it's not always noticeable but what i like about it is that you you know it's like it's it's more of a subconscious thing so you you do see that it continues and so you have that continuity to it um So I'm trying to get away from so much of the geometric. Uh, I do a lot with squares and circles and rectangles. And I just kind of felt like, you know, I want to get, get beyond that and try something different, try to loosen up. And I think that's kind of going to be something that is uh, prevalent in my work, even even a workshop that I did this weekend, I was really trying to 
sorry, I'm trying to do a couple of things at once. Um, tr I was trying to really loosen up a bit. So uh, anyway, just trying to make some organic flowing lines that go across that continue from page to page. So Jim has a question about the uh, the pencils that I'm using. I'm using um, Derwent Ink Tense pencils, and they are some of my favorite favorite. Um, sorry, I did that one. They are some of my favorite water soluble pencils. So after I'm done drawing the lines. I am going to spread some water on them. So this is the center of the book. And I'll kind of stop once I get over on this side. Okay. So I'm going to go back it's here and just going to just going to paint over top of the water soluble pencils and because I don't have a lot of pigment down they don't radically change the colors underneath if I really shade with them then yeah, they're gonna really spread that pigment around. And because I'm working on the mixed media paper, the mixed media paper I have is Strathmore 500 series mixed media paper, and it's 100% rag paper. So it's 100% cotton, there's no wood fiber in it. And uh, the best papers are 100% rag. Um, because you don't get any of the nasty chemicals and such that they use to bleach out the, the paper pulp. Um, and so it, it reacts a little bit differently than the other mixed media paper that I use. I use the Strathmore 400 series a lot, but that is a paper pulp paper and or a tree pulp paper or wood pulp, whatever you want to call it. And, um, it's very smooth and the, the, the colors really blend out a lot. So with this 500 series paper, I noticed that it doesn't quite blend out as easily. And I think it because it has a little bit more tooth, a little bit more texture. And I'm not worrying about letting you know letting the pages dry um, because i'm really using the same color scheme throughout um, it's okay if the pages touch sometimes folks don't want the, the the color to transfer or the paint to transfer but because of the the um the sameness because of using all the same colors, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. And what I put down is is really there. So I use the Derwent Ink Tense paints, which are right up here, and um, and that they're just like the Ink Tense. So the Ink Tense pencils tend to, well, Derwent says that they are more permanent. Um, sometimes they do lift off. Uh, whenever you paint over them after you've spread them and they've dried. Um, but, you know, this is, I scrubbed pretty hard on top of everything and, you know, the paint didn't bleed, it didn't lift up. So um, anyway, I'm going to, I want to dry these before I do anything else. So I'm going to hit that with a hair dryer. So I'll go ahead and mute it so you don't have to listen to that.
Sorry, I ended up retrieving stuff off the floor. It's the problem of using the hair dryer. Sometimes papers just tend to go everywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, so if this is your first time tuning in, you can always check out previous videos either on Facebook, just go to the videos tab um, and you can find them there or on YouTube. So depending on where you are tuning in from. Um, all right, so I did the, the lighter lines. Now I did some of the darker lines and that is with that willow. So there are just a few, few of those comes over into one. So I do want to continue that on this side. So with this willow, with this darker brown, I did a little bit of shading on one side. So I really don't know what this little book is about. So when I did that emergence journal, I, I had that thought, like I was working on some artwork that was all about, about emerging or emergence. And I decided like, oh, I was going to do this live streaming and do that little book. And it was, it was just, you know, I knew from the beginning that that was going to be the theme of that little book. However, with this book, I have no, well, I'm not going to say I don't have any idea because I've been working on some art lately and I think that might influence this. So we'll see. So that's the thing. It's like I work, do, you know, I do all, I do multiple things. I do uh, some drawings and I do some uh, mixed media paintings and mixed media work. I also work in a big, large visual journal and I actually just taught a weekend journaling workshop, a uh, virtual workshop. And, uh, some of you may have attended that, so um, glad to see that you're tuning in now. I guess you, I guess you, uh, I was trying, to, I was trying to say something like smart and self-deprecating, but just didn't quite get to it. Um, it's that, it's that afternoon time when my brain just decides that it doesn't want to work very well. Um, anyway, just. Just trying to, just gonna spread this. So what, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep the sharp edge on the one side and then just gonna take the brush and blend out, blend it out on the other side. So basically like all my ideas kind of cross pollinate. Um, so if I'm working in my big journal, oftentimes I get ideas for standalone pieces of art. Um, sometimes working on the standalone art, I come up with an idea that, oh, I'd have to explore that in my, in my journal. Uh, and then a lot of times those ideas work themselves into these small books. So kind of dedicating space and time to the small books um, and really thinking about it as a one continuous piece of art, um, thinking of it as a visual narrative, that's something kind of new. It, it was actually, I developed it for a class that I was supposed to teach and unfortunately it got, well, I did teach it back in March of 2020, right before the pandemic shut everything down. But I was scheduled to go back in a couple weeks to teach it at the John C. Campbell Folk School. And it's called Beyond Blank Pages. But I think I'm going to turn it into an online uh, workshop. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get something out for that. But um, yeah, so this idea of having the things flipping, like the artwork, the, the colors and the lines kind of flowing from page to page 
is something that's fairly new. Like I said, I taught that class in 2020. Um, and it's something that I don't do in my other journal, my big everyday journal. I really look at this as uh, a very specific individual piece of art. Whereas my big journal tends to have separate pages that kind of just explore my everyday life. Take that fork off. Okay, sorry, I was just checking something, just making sure that everything was still running. I think I will stop this book like here in the middle. All right, I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer. So let me mute it. So just kind of flipping through, kind of taking in what I've done so far. Um, I pulled out some collage material because I, I really want to go ahead and start putting some things in. So I've got uh, some brown craft paper. That was just from some kind of packaging, I think. Um, and then I've got some old book pages. Uh, these happen to be from an old uh, cookbook. And then I've got some bits and pieces. I love 
using old paper back. And I just love that, that the, you know, as the paper ages because of the acids and such that they um, kind of, I mean, they start to turn and they, they turn yellow and kind of brownish. Um, some folks just don't like the fact that I use this kind of thing in my book without sealing it um, because the acids in the, this paper can affect the, the, the paper here. So, I mean, this 100% rag paper is acid-free. The watercolor paper is acid-free. Um, so a lot of folks are like, oh, well, how about the arch archival quality of it? And I'm like, I don't care about the archival quality. I mean, I have books that are 20 years old, journals that are 20 years old. And, you know, it's like the stuff is still stuck in it. It hasn't like disintegrated, um, hasn't ruined the, the artwork that's in it. And, um, but, you know, it's like 20, 30, 40 years from now. I'm either going to be dead or too old to even care. So um, that's not really my concern. My concern is just, I want to make art, you know, and if I'm always concerned about archival, the archival quality of it, I can, I can really hold myself back. Now, if that matters to you, by all means, you know, it's like, think about that. I mean, you have to decide what works for you. Um, I think I'm going to use one of these. That's very interesting. I might uh, later, like I like how it has the rounded corner. I may go and cut that off later, but not right now. Keeping everything kind of like in the earth tones and then red. It's one of it's a color. This is a color scheme that I use a lot. So you may have seen that I started tearing it in one direction and then I turned it in another and tore it. That is because a lot of paper has a grain. And what I mean by green was, you see how like I was able to tear that really, really, you know, fairly straight. And that's because like most of the paper fibers are kind of lined up more this direction. So, you know, the length of them is more like this. Um, if I try to go across the grain, like I did down here, that's when, you know, it, it, I can't really tear it in a straight line. Um, so that's something to kind of think about most, not all papers do, but not many papers do. And so that can be really useful. Um, you know, like I wanted that ragged edge. Actually, I want two ragged edges. I'm going to go ahead and tear off the very edge of the paper. So, you know, I wanted a torn kind of ragged edge, but I didn't want it to be, um, you know, really zigzaggy because I want to go across the uh, the paper, not here, but I'm thinking right here. And it might be very interesting. Let's see. So what I want to do, like I said, it's, um, I'm trying to get it thin, but I'm still trying to pull it out. I mean, it's, it's not tearing in a perfect circle, 
so I can kind of get kind of a gentle slope. It's kind of what I'm trying to get. So that way I'm able to get it pointed, but it's still very long. And then I want this to wrap around. So I want to kind of maybe about that long. And then same thing. So as I tear it, I'm trying to pull like the direction that I want it to taper off. Seems to work pretty well. Now I do want to have a straight edge. I'm thinking about kind of having it in this corner. I need to trim this at a almost a 90 degree angle, the best that I can do. So I leave it hanging over just a little bit and I can come back later when it dries and trim more of that off. And I think I want to use the book page. This time it's not the uh, recipe book. So I'm tearing against the green. This does this paper does have a green. It actually goes horizontal. I've torn this paper enough to know which direction. <laughs>
So Matthew's asking about if I'll hi highlight the words, probably not on this. Um, and the and the reason is that I'm using it more for the texture, um, and there's not a lot of really big words left on these pieces. But I will show you all something that I did this weekend with the uh, online workshop. So um, I do a technique called blackout poetry. Um, where you can use any kind of really found text, whether it's a newspaper or a, um, a book page. Uh, but here's one that I did this weekend. And so it's a, it's a page from um, a book of Ed, Edgar Allan Poe stories and just pulled out a random page and then just went through and, and you know, kind of try to link the words together to create sentences and, and, phrases and to try to like put together a poem and then I drew rectangles around them and then used the water soluble pencil around it um but that's I, I do that a lot um I don't know I just I like like that idea of just using that found text I'm thinking that this needs to come in on this front page Renee mentioned that paper bag is her new favorite collage paper. Um, I get this from, uh, actually we order a lot of stuff for our animals through Chewy and they often package instead of using like bubble wrap or um, like styrofoam peanuts, they use a lot of crumpled up craft paper. It's a real heavy, thick paper. So if I ever need some, I just, wait to get an order from Chewy in. Okay. I'm not really sure what I want to do next. I got my pencils here. I've got the paint. I'm kind of feeling paint. I think I'm going to I'm going to use the big brush and I've got this dark brown. Don't want it to be too overwhelming kind of more like a stain let me dry that see what that looks like has little bits of paper kind of flying everywhere. Um, but I like that. I like that it's not like super dark. Uh, some of the some of these pages have so much going on that, that kind of mutes some things, kind of uh, dulls down the contrast in some places. So let's go ahead and doesn't stick too well to the recipe page. Just 
just kind of wanting to have some kind of like big swaths of this brown. And if, if things get a little too um, dark, that I think that'll be okay. Because I think what I can do is I can always pull things out and highlight things later. But sometimes if you have too much contrast, like kind of in your initial layers, sometimes what you do on top doesn't stand out quite as much. So I don't know, I'm just, just kind of playing and experimenting, seeing where things go. Okay, let me go ahead and mute it. All right, so hopefully it's still going. I was all of a sudden it was like I do this through Zoom, and all of a sudden it was like Zoom just uh, kind of quit on me. So <laughs> um, probably lost connection, um, but it's back. So hopefully uh, I'm I'm wrapping up anyway. So I'm, I think I'm at a, a good stopping point, and uh, just you know got some things going. I have no idea where this little book is going. Um, really no idea what kind of theme. I have a vague idea, but not really sure if I'm gonna completely use it. I One of the things I am thinking about is maybe using acrylic paint in this, something I haven't, I don't do often. So I have to think about that, but I, I kind of feel like because of the paper, because of its size, acrylic paint might be kind of interesting to play around with. But let me go ahead and switch this over. So yeah, so um, yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up and, and kind of stop there. I think that's a good stopping point, especially since I really don't know where I'm gonna go forward with this. Like I said, I might uh, introduce some acrylic paint at some point, but anyway, just trying to get back into the groove of the live stream thing. So uh, just remember if you have any questions or comments, please pop them down into the comments. Um, if there's anything that you would like to see, um, you know, any kind of uh, techniques or things like that, uh, feel free to put those down there as well. And I'll try to see if I can work anything in. So um, anyway, I really appreciate you being here and tuning in and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. And um, yeah, really glad that, that uh, I'm back doing this. And so uh, until next week, thank you so much. And as always, happy creating.